Hey everyone, Isaac here. What is broadcasting? No, 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 not like what you see on TV or on the radio, like for algorithms that involve linear algebra, which is basically everyone. We get a lot of questions about broadcasting on our forum and in other places, and we think it's a foundational concept to understand in say machine learning, no big deal, so that you can have fast and efficient code that most importantly works. Let's dive in. When we talk about broadcasting in the context of linear algebra programs, we're really referring to functions that are broadcastable. A broadcastable function is a function that allows us to pass in multiple argument instances at a time rather than feeding them in individually one at a time. Those who are familiar with NumPy probably already know what broadcasting is. If you want to take the cosine of each value in a NumPy array, you don't loop over the array values, you just stick it into the argument of the function and it does it for you. I should mention too that in Penny Lane, if you have a quantum circuit that depends on some parameters and you just want to evaluate your circuit on many different sets of parameters, you can broadcast over those parameters. Essentially, what we're trying to do is make Penny Lane circuits behave exactly like NumPy functions. This might be all you need broadcasting for, for back of the napkin type calculations. But what if you have something bigger and more serious like a machine learning algorithm? This is arguably one of the most important applications of broadcasting. Let's say I have a bunch of data representing handwritten digits like the MNIST data set. And I have a machine learning algorithm that I wanna train it on. My machine learning model would take in one data point, which is one handwritten digit. It goes through a bunch of layers and then outputs the probability that the data point I supplied it is a zero, one, two, et cetera. This process of feeding in a data point to a machine learning model and getting a prediction at the end of it is happening constantly when you train a neural network. And with broadcasting, we're able to feed in multiple data points at a time to our machine learning model rather than one data point at a time. So there, done, that's broadcasting. JK, nope. We need to go back to the basics and ask why this is so important. Why all the fuss about broadcasting? And since machine learning is such a widespread application, like basically everybody in the grandmother has heard of artificial intelligence at this point, we'll focus on it as the cornerstone application of why broadcasting matters. And the machine learning framework that I'm gonna use to interface with Penny Lane is gonna be PyTorch. So I'll put some illustrations on the screen right now that'll show the network that we'll create, but basically it's a classical layer feeding into a quantum layer with a softmax activation function at the very end. So I'm just gonna create my two native PyTorch layers right now. My first layer that I'll call C layer is my classical layer. It's just gonna be a linear layer. And then the softmax activation function will go at the very end. So to create a quantum layer in PyTorch, basically I need to create a quantum circuit in Penny Lane. And then there's a cute Penny Lane function that basically turns it into a PyTorch layer under the hood. My first layer is a classical layer. It's gonna take an input of size two, and then it's going to output something of size two. And so my quantum circuit just needs to take in two parameters. The nice and easy way to do this is to just create a two qubit quantum circuit with two gates in it that have parameters that are my inputs from the classical layer. So here's my quantum circuit that I'm then going to translate into a torch layer in just a second. I'm using an angle embedding procedure to embed the outputs from my classical layer into a quantum circuit. And then for a couple of trainable parameters here, I'm just gonna have a couple of angles of rotation for two different rotation gates. And then my quantum layer will output the expectation value of the poly Z operator on both qubits. Cool, so what we'll do now is turn our quantum circuit into a torch layer. The first thing I need to do is to tell PyTorch what the shapes are of each of my trainable parameters in my quantum circuit. The data structure here has to be a dictionary where the key is the name that I gave my trainable parameters in my quantum circuit. So I called them weights here. So my key is going to be called weights. And then the value is just the shape of what weights is, which ends up just being the number of qubits in my circuit, which is two. So weights is is a thing that is of size two. So to turn your quantum circuit into a torch layer, you just call the class qml.qnn.torchlayer. You give it your Q node or your circuit, and then you provide it the weight shapes variable that we just created. So now I can use Q layer like I would any other typical layer in PyTorch, which is really neat. So like I said, my neural network's just gonna be a classical layer, a quantum layer, and then the softmax activation function at the end. So I can kind of just join each of those layers together sequentially using Torch's sequential class. And there you go, that's my neural network. So my model's defined, now I wanna show you how cool broadcasting is in a second, so I just need to define some dummy data that I can pass through my model. One little thing here, PyTorch needs to see a leading dimension in whatever you give it. So if I just gave it one of my data points in the dummy data that I just created, 
it would yell at me, but I wanna show you how slow it is to pass in each data point one at a time. So I'm just going to create some other dummy data set called dummy data no broadcast, which basically reshapes every entry of my dummy data to have a leading dimension of one so that PyTorch doesn't yell at me. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what my dummy data looks like and I'm gonna show you what my model looks like when I pass it, some dummy data. So as you can see, my dummy data is a bunch of junk, but my model's functioning as it should. And actually it's doing some broadcasting. I'm not passing in one data point at a time. I gave it five data points all at once and I asked it to turn out the result. Since broadcasting allows us to evaluate a function or a model or whatever over many data points at once rather than one at a time, it actually does provide a very significant speed up. Let's get into the details. At the level of simulating a quantum circuit, a quantum circuit is basically just a matrix vector product machine. Here's what I mean. We have an input state that's represented by a vector in a computational basis, usually the poly Z basis, and each gate is a unitary matrix that acts on the input state in the given order. The state gets modified after every gate through matrix vector multiplication. And at the end of the circuit, before measuring, we have some quantum state. That's essentially what a quantum circuit simulator is doing at a high level. Classical machine learning models are basically the same. Yes, there's some nonlinear activation functions involved, but basically the arguments to those nonlinear activation functions are weights times a feature vector plus a bias, AKA matrix vector products. So matrix vector products are at the bedrock of quantum and classical machine learning. They're happening multiple times, hundreds, thousands, millions even, every time you pass data into your model. So if you want your model to be fast, you better be doing matrix vector products right. But usually you don't have control over how matrix vector products occur. You just ask a program to do them for you. So what's going on here to make sure that they're happening as quickly as possible? On virtually every single computer in the world, there is something or some slight variation of it called BLAS, which stands for Basic Linear Algebra Subprograms. BLAS originated as a Fortran library in the late 70s and really hasn't changed all that much, relatively speaking, since then. But within BLAS are state-of-the-art programs for performing anything from vector addition to matrix-matrix multiplication. BLAS, or some slight variation of it, is the thing that gets called every time you do anything linear algebra related in Python or pretty much any other programming language. Okay, so we know a little bit about BLAS. Let's make a tie between it and machine learning. Now let's say I want to evaluate my machine learning model on not just one data point, but a batch of them, many of them. I want to do some broadcasting. And let's just say for simplicity that the number of data points that I want to feed into my model is also n. If I fed everything in series one at a time, then I'd be looking at order n cubed time for this calculation to happen. BLAS's matrix matrix multiplication algorithm can scale anywhere from order n to the 2.81 down to order n to to the 2.37. Hold, 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 hold up. You're telling me that my huge machine learning model is being stitched up and accelerated down the road by a 40 year old Fortran library. Yep, basically. We'll put some links in the description if you wanna learn more about what these subprograms are in BLAST to let you go this much faster. But let's see this in practice. So what we're gonna do to demonstrate a speed up with broadcasting with our toy example here is to just pass in every data point in our whole dummy data set to our model in a few different ways. One data point at a time, so no broadcasting really used at all, and with an increasing number of data points that we feed in at the same time, so we're gonna be using broadcasting up to about like 100 data points at a time just to illustrate the concept. And I just wanna show you the time that it takes to do so. Let's show you how much time it takes to evaluate our model on every single data point one at a time. A few moments later. Six and a half hours later. Okay, so we just finished in a bit over three minutes, which is pretty bad. So what I'm gonna do now is instead of feeding in one data point at a time, 50,000 times, I'm gonna feed it 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 100 data points at a time going through my entire data set and uh, see how long that takes. Um, so here's the little bit of code. Basically, I'm looping through every single batch size and then timing the amount of time that it takes for my model to be evaluated over each batch of data 
and uh, just appending it to a list, and I'm gonna plot the results for you. So I was able to loop over my data six times using some broadcasting to various different degrees, you know, 10, 20, all the way up to 100 data points at a time in a minute versus three minutes only doing it once, looping over the full data set once. So let's just illustrate what this looks like graphically. Um, side note, Penny Lane has a Penny Lane style that you can use in Matplotlib. Really cool, came out in version 32, you should definitely use it. You get like the penny lane aesthetic of things kind of being sketchy and you get our colors too. Looks really nice. All right, and uh, here's the graph. So this is the time taken for one full pass through my data. The times on the y-axis and the batch size or the broadcast degree, if you want to call it that, is on the x-axis. And uh, yeah, quite a steep drop off in, uh, in time taken. Um, yeah, broadcasting is pretty sweet. So to summarize, if we feed a batch of data to our model, we get a reduction in time that it would have taken had we fed in each point one at a time. That is the beauty of broadcasting. Hopefully this makes broadcasting clear. That said, machine learning code can get quite complex. So if you do run into any errors with broadcasting in your code, don't worry. Feel free to ping us on our discussion forum or on our Slack channel. There will be links in the description for both of those. And that'll do it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. Please like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao. Whoops. Un not sub programmed. Blast? Blast? I don't know what's going on. Time is of the essence. Still recording? Yes.